What? So we are getting back into All Rise for the Honorable Perry T. Cook, written by Leslie Connor. Chapter 14, A New Stink. When I stepped out of the Blue River, so right there, when I stepped out and we knew Perry was leaving, so this must be another chapter told by Perry. Thank you. Oh, I can tell you guys are getting a lot more into this because you're thinking and you're paying attention and listening um, to, to the questions I'm asking. So good job. Pat yourselves on the back. we got to pay attention to who the story is being told by. When I stepped out of the Blue River Co-Ed Correctional Facility, all I felt is wrong and dizzier than before. I make my way to the back seat of Thomas Van Leer's SUV, which has a new car smell that crawls straight up into my nostrils. Got your seatbelt on, Perry? Need any, need any help with that? No, thank you. I could remind him that I'm 11, that I ride in a car to school every day, and I know how to buckle up. But I do not feel talkative. I see him looking at me in his rearview window. So Perry, this is a new chapter for you. He cranks the steering wheel as we begin to roll. I look back and see mom and Big Ed and Fojo and the warden all standing at the glass, each with one arm raised. I'm not sure they'll see me, but I press my palm against the glass inside the SUV. You'll love the house, Van Leer is saying. You'll feel right at home. You'll have a nice bedroom, a real bedroom, and you can make it your own. We can paint, put up posters, whatever you want. I know he's still checking the mirror. I won't look up there. I'm watching Big Blue River. I understand that you'll miss your mom, and that's normal. I, want, I don't want you to worry. You'll still see her. We'll follow the schedule. Meanwhile, you'll get to know our routines. He's talking too much. The new smell of the SUV is too much. My head feels some kind of horrible. You'll have a first family supper with us this evening, he says. He laughs and adds, they know you're coming. They set a place, they're setting a place for you at the table. Are you hungry now, Perry? Home is not far away, but we could stop. Ever been to a drive through Do you like milkshakes, french fries? His tone changes. Normally I wouldn't suggest snack food before supper, but this is no ordinary day. My horrible floating head bobs once, twice. I'm in a predicament. There's a floor mat at my feet. I lean up. The seatbelt stops me. I'm trapped. I turn my face to the side and I lose my lunch all down the inside of Mr. Van Leer's car door. So what is it? What does it mean when he says he loses his lunch? Troy? Oh, do you think he dropped it or do you think think about how he's feeling? He said his head is uh, throbbing. He feels kind of yucky. What do you think it means when he lo when he says he lost his lunch? Hayden? Um, he can't find his lunch. So you think he literally lost it? He just doesn't know where it is? Um, I think There's no other kids in the car, honey. It's only Mr. Van Leer. Okay, so in this case, when it says he lost his lunch and it talks about how his, like, his head feels weird and everything else, it means he threw up. So he threw up his lunch all over the inside of Mr. Van Leer's car. Okay, that's what it means. He lost his lunch means he threw it up. Yuck. Ugh. Poor guy, right? Yucky. He lost his lunch means he threw it up. Means he was so nervous. And, and so upset that he, um, he threw up all over. Chapter 15, not right at home. Mr. Van Leer pushes the door to his home open for me. I step inside. The walls feel close. The ceilings are low. The air is warm and smells sweet and spicy. Better than the new car smell and throw up. Okay, and that right there would have given us the hint that Losing his lunch meant he threw up is if we kept reading and we could check that, right? Ah, I think that's Thai food, said Van Leer. Don't I smell coconut? He cocks his head at me. He thinks that he should know to stop talking about food by now. Maybe he thinks I'm empty. 
Troy, you need to make better choices. My wife took a wonderful series of cooking lessons in foreign cuisine, he tells me. Then he calls out, hello, Robin, we're here. I wait for Mr. Van Leer's family, even though I'm dreading it. I'm sure my face is gray. They're going to find out that I threw up in their car. A woman comes around the corner from the kitchen. Her face is turned downward for a moment. Her head is all long, tight curls, long, light curls, just like Zoe Samuel's mom. Another look, and I realize she is Mrs. Samuels. What? I don't get any words out. Something else catches my eye, and that something is Zoe. She leans around the corny, corner. Z Zoe? Yeah, she gives a little shrug. Hi, Perry. She winds her fingers into her hair, then makes a, a fist. I know Zoe. She does that when she's nervous. Tom? I say it louder than I meant to. Everything is silent for a few seconds. I look at Zoe and say, Thomas Van Leer is Tom? I watch her eyebrows arch up. Yeah, my stepdad, Tom. Mr. Thomas Van Leer has been very busy this whole time with his head inside the closet, pushing his coat onto a hanger. I'm not sure he heard me, but Zoe's mom has. I'm not sure whether to call her Mrs. Van Leer or Mrs. Samuels, but she gives me a kind smile. I think my mouth is hanging open. We're glad to have you here, Perry, she says. Her head tilts in the friendly way. Can I get you anything? Water, Mr. Van Leer says, spring, uh, springing back out of the closet. He needs a drink of water. Jaya. He herds me into the kitchen, okay? He directs him into the kitchen. Um, Jaya and Ashlyn, please don't make me ask you again. He herds me into the kitchen, almost stepping on the back of my sneakers as we go. He drags the warden's suitcase behind us and set it down. He pulls a glass from the kitchen cupboard and accidentally clanks it against the faucet as he fills it. Everything is about him is sped up since my great moment inside the SUV. Throw up has a way of making people hurry. He hands me the glass and I take a tiny sip. And let's run a load of wash, he says, nodding at Zoe's mother. Perry's jacket is a bit soiled. That's a nice way of saying that it's covered in, in barf, right? And throw up. <laughs> he tries to talk plainly like nothing is wrong with puking in a car or down your own sleeve. So would you mind, Robin? Not at all. Good. Now I have to go back to the car just for a minute. He grabs paper towels and spray cleaner from under the Van Leer kitchen sink. I should offer to clean the car door, but Thomas Van Leer is halfway down the hall. He calls over his shoulder. And hey, Zoe, sweetheart, you can go ahead and show Perry his room and the bathroom so he can wash up. Show him the whole house. He disappears with his cleaning supplies. The room takes a breath. In the silence, I'm still holding the glass of water, which I do not want. I'm thinking about rules and wondering if it's okay to set this glass down on the counter or do I put it in the sink or inside the dishwasher? Mrs. Samuel, Samuels or Van Leer reaches and takes it from my hand. Looks like you're done with this, she says softly. Then she helps me out of the jacket so easily that I feel bad about what's over it, what's all over it. Zoe watches. I still cannot believe that I'm in her house on this horrible day. Hey, mom, she said, my jacket could go in too. Good idea, says her mom. Maybe not, I think, but I can't seem to say the words. Zoe's mom carries my jacket. Zoe grabs my backpack. I pull up the handles on Warren Doherty's rowing suitcase and follow them down the hall. Chapter 16. The room where I will barely sleep in. Barely's in like parentheses. That means he does, you know, that's just kind of what he's thinking. It's supposed to be the room that he's sleeping in, but he's thinking he, he won't actually sleep in there very much. Barely sleep in. Zoe and I stand in the bedroom in the Van Leer house. I am supposed to sleep here. I'm gonna fight with myself. I don't want to look around the space, but I have to. It's very square, and the walls are the colors of mom's morning coffee. That's with two big splashes of milk. The bed is a mound of brown and white pillows and covers it with what looks like giant dessert. All the furniture is dark wood. Lamps with big flared heads stand all around the room. And then there's Zoe, who's shifting in place. There isn't much to show you, she said. She points around the room, saying, bed, nightstand, dresser. 
window, curtain, and the closet is here. She pushes on a narrow door. I see a tiny empty room. We can move your furniture around if you want. I don't have any furniture, I say. Well, there's stuff in this room, she says. You know what I mean. A few seconds grind by. I think of the clock, the gray clocks at home. I scan the colored coffee walls and I don't find a clock there. I have to have a clock. Perry, Zoe whispers, are you all right? When did you know, I ask, giving her a stone face. I can't help it. Her shoulders slumped. They told me on Friday at supper. I'm sorry, there was no way for me to tell you. I know it's your worst case scenario. I knew it the minute I heard, but I was hoping, what? Hoping I'd like being yanked out of Blue River as long as it was to come live with you? My face turns hot. Zoe looks stunned. No, but Tom might have been thinking that. Oh, I need to do attendance, silly me. I'll finish up this chapter and then I'll do it. Maybe it's better than, well, I don't know. At least I'm not Brian Morris or, she sighs and does not finish the sentence. Zoe Samuels is having trouble talking to me. That never happens. After a few seconds, she asks, do you want to put your stuff in your dresser? No. Later, I stare at the swirls of plaster on the ceiling. I'm used to seeing square tiles, but it is just one of a hundred or so things that are not right. The bed does not feel like mine, and I'm laying down, but off balance, too high from the floor. There's something wrong with a little bit of supper in my belly. I'm not sick from it. It actually tasted good, but I ate it with the wrong people. Right now, I'd be happy to hear Miss Sashona say, it's not fair. Lights from somewhere outside cast weird shadows on the wall, and I have a strange sense of how far down the hall bathroom is. I didn't think to ask if I could just go and use it in the night. The shower isn't the shower in there is messed up. The water comes out of this little spout at the bottom, like for filling the tub, but nothing comes out of the shower head at top at the top. I crouched under the low spout and splashed water on me to clean up. Okay, so he's used to the just the stand out showers that just like automatically spray when you turn on the water, like some bathrooms have. He's not used to the faucet, like when you have a tub and a shower in one and you have to pull up that little thing to make the, wa the, the water go up through the shower, right? So that's what's confusing him now. He's never seen one of those before. He's only ever seen the, the standing ones or he thinks that, you know, that's just for the tub. He doesn't realize he can pull up the thing and make it come out of the shower. Maybe only the bathtub part works. I'm not used to that. There are no tubs at Blue River, except for the little plastic one that I outgrew a long, long time ago. I hope I won't need to get up in the night. I'm afraid I'll knock over one of the lamps in this room where I'm not sleeping. Meanwhile, I forgot to ask what I'm supposed to do in the morning, which is slowly, slowly getting closer. I will have to wait for six days just to tell mom how I got sick. How Mr. Van Leer has turned out to be Zoe's stepdad. How the shower doesn't work right. And how every single thing is different here. I lie in the strange bed, aching to talk to mom. Suddenly I know this is what new residents feel like on their first night at Blue River. I'm the new intake at the Van Leer house. All right. <laughs>